welcome to the Fiber Fables Knitting Podcast. My name is Faith and I'm a knitter living here in Kansas and this is my space where I talk all about my knitting. Today I have a regular podcast for you guys. I have three finished objects and some of my whips and new cast-ons to show you and I also will be sharing a couple of my future plans. I am wearing my cardigan number seven that I made last year in December. I knit it at a five millimeter needle and I think you're supposed to knit it at a seven. Um, I used Patton's Classic Wool Worsted in the color dark gray or something, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I have plans to make another one in an orange color, so yeah. Also, I wanted to say that I've been podcasting for one year, which it hasn't, it didn't feel like a year, so I didn't realize that I've been doing it for a year. Um, I think I started my podcast in the middle of July last year, so yes, I'm very appreciative of all the people who are still here and still watch my videos. It means a lot to me. Okay. So let's just start with finished objects. I'm sorry my hair is crazy. I did it this morning and now it's in the afternoon. So it's, <sighs> my hair is weird. I also have the air conditioning off because I noticed in a couple of my videos when it's been on, you can hear it and it might be a little bit distracting. So I'll just be sweating this whole video, it's fine. My first finished object that I have to share with you is my anchor tee. This is by Petite Knit, and I used Patton's Linen, which is a mostly cotton, I think it's 65% cotton, 35% linen, and it makes a really nice fabric. It drapes very nicely. It is a little bit heavy, but it doesn't stretch out a ton when you wear it throughout the day. Um, I don't sweat in it. It's... It's a really nice yarn. I would recommend it for um, summer knitting. I did modify this pattern to have short rows. So I, you won't really be able to tell, but the back is uh, longer than the front. What I did was, I believe I knit, like the beginning of the round is like right in the middle of the back. So I knit 35 and then turn, did a double stitch, and then knit 35 past the beginning of round marker. And I believe I knit past the, the German short row or the double stitch, either four or five stitches, and then turned and did that, did it back, I think five times. So it really um, raised the back significantly, which I like, um, but yeah. So this pattern calls for a three millimeter needle. I used a 3.5 because I am a tighter knitter and I thought it would solve my gauge issue. At the time of me casting this on, I had a 38 inch bust and my bust grew. So I was looking at getting one inch of negative ease, but since my gauge was looser than what the pattern recommended, this probably has three inches of positive ease on my 41 inch bust, which I actually really like. So yeah. And the color of this yarn is called Sweet Potato. It's really pretty. It's this really nice orange color. Um, so yeah, I really like the anchor tee. It's really straightforward, like all petite knit patterns are. Um, I would really recommend it. And I would recommend the Patents Linen to go with it too. It's, it's a really nice yarn. And I'm looking forward to wearing this. <laughs> So this is probably my second summer appropriate knit of the year. Um, my other summer knit was my Alino tee using bamboo yarn from Lion Brand. So yeah, this is my second summer knit of the year. I've mostly been knitting with wool. So I hope next year since I'm now focusing on my autumn knits now. I hope next year I can plan a little bit better 
and get some more summer friendly yarn so that I can actually knit summer appropriate things instead of trying to wear wool year round. I will also be putting some shots of me wearing these items and I will be putting some information on the side, um, like all the specs of the pattern and everything that I did on the side so that, you know, whatever. My second finished object is my champagne cardigan, also by Petite Knit. I've knit this pattern twice. This is my third time knitting it in a wool yarn. And the yarn I used is Blue Sky Fibers Woolstock Worsted in the color Wild Time. And this is such a soft yarn. I love it so much. And the way it behaves after blocking is amazing. I haven't worn this this I haven't worn this at all. And it's really drapey and it just fits very well. So yeah. Blocking did kind of help the button band just a little bit. It's knit a little too tight so it feels like it won't like close comfortably and it's just like a little like tight I guess. Um, I wish I went up a needle size than what the pattern recommended because this was supposed to have 47 inches around but now it's probably more like 44 or 45 which isn't a lot of positive ease on me and I just really want an oversized cardigan but this is gonna go so good with dresses and with turtlenecks and stuff so yeah I mostly did everything to pattern except I lengthened the body by a couple inches the stockinette part at least I did all the ribbing to pattern um so yeah I really like the raglan increases and the buttons I used are just these um, wooden buttons uh, that I got at Walmart. They just came in like a jar of just random buttons and I found some that look the same and I just put them on there. I really wanna get some of that fabric glue to put on the ends of the yarn when I sew in buttons because I do find that they become loose really quick. So, Um, yeah, but I really like this cardigan and I can't wait to style it and wear it more. And my last finished object is something that I haven't talked about in a while, but it's my birds of a feather shawl, which I have no clue how to show you. Um, <laughs> but you start here at the bottom and then increase until you get to this point right here and then you stop increasing so then it kind of forms this asymmetrical shape right here so it kind of looks like those um triangle shawls but just a little bit different there's like no pictures on Ravelry of how this shawl actually looks, so I'm going to try to show you. Um, so here's like kind of like the center of it, if it were to be a triangle shaped shawl. And then you just have these ends right here. And for the border of it, you're supposed to alternate between the mohair and the merino but I didn't want to do that. That's too many ends to even, and there were already so many, and I just didn't really want to deal with that. So I just did garter stitch and bound off knitwise um, on the wrong side row. So that way it just looks like um, a pearl row on the right side. So yeah, the yarn I used was um, Fuzzy Peach Fibers Soft Sock, which is her 7525 base, and her um, mohair base, all in the same color. It's Gunsend from her Hello Pumpkin collection last year. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I really like this and I'm happy it's finished. It's one of my last projects that I started when I was still living in Wyoming, so it's been on the needle since February and it's finally done. 
and now I can wear it to work because sometimes it gets cold where I work because I work in a basement. So I always bring a shawl to work and this is going to be so comfortable and so cozy. And this also weighs nothing. And this is such a fun pattern and it's so addicting to knit that I think this is just going to be another mindless knit for me. Um, I used about one and a half, well, one skein of the merino and 20 grams of the second skein that I had. And then I used one whole skein of the mohair. Um, well, I had like a little bit left and I tried to weigh it, but it didn't even show up on the scale. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so if you were going to knit this, like you would just need two skeins of hand dyed merino and one skein of hand dyed mohair and you could knit it. And then with your leftover merino, you could make a hat or a pair of socks. So, yeah, that's my birds of a feather. And it's so pretty and I'm happy it's finished. Okay, so I have a lot of works in progress to show you. And the first one is my Una sweater. I don't remember where I was at last time I talked about this. Oh, I finished the body of it. And I'm almost to the ribbing on the sleeve. So this is what it looks like. The body isn't as cinched in as I would like it to be. I did think about putting an elastic in it. Oh yeah, here I was last time. I did think about putting an elastic, but I think what I'm going to do is just wear it with flowy pants or a skirt. And then that way I can just have the waistband of the skirt or pants just end right where the ribbing cuts off and that'll kind of give it the same effect. So I'm not too worried about it and like, We'll just see how this looks when it's blocked, but I really like it so far. Um, I really like the color and yeah, the neck sits like this and I don't think it's going to change when I block it because that's just how the neck is supposed to look like. It's just supposed to kind of sit open like around your neck. I don't know how to explain it, but like I said, we'll see what happens after blocking. If I need to, I'll put an elastic to kind of just like cinch it in a little bit. This yarn is a little bit textured like on my chest and around my neck. So I probably won't be too bothered that it sits pretty high up. But yeah, that's my Una sweater. The yarn I'm using is Haiku by Scassel. Highland Luxe in the color Mist. It's a 90% Andean Highland wool and 10% mohair. It's a really nice yarn. I would, I really like it. My next project that I have to show you are my Farnesina socks. I know one was finished last time, I think. I don't remember. <laughs> Cause I know I showed these in my vlog, but one is finished and I'm just on the foot right now of the other one and I'm doing eight repeats of the pattern on the foot so I have five more to go and then I'll do the toe and then I'll be finished. I'm super excited to have these finished. I've been craving my vanilla socks <laughs> as a mindless knit. These are a little bit tight but I think blocking will really help, especially since this is just 100% superwash merino. Um, so I'm not too worried, but this is such a fun pattern. I would highly recommend it. It's, you can memorize the texture pretty quickly. You're just crossing stitches and then you just have this cable that you do on the side. And then the back is just stockinette and yeah, it's pretty simple. But yeah, the yarn I'm using is Sorella Classic Sock in the color Alpine. And I'm so excited for these to be done. My next project is a test knit. 
and it is the Moss Haven sweater by Liv Olvin that I'm test knitting. And this is what it's looking like so far. It is quite small. <laughs> um, I'm knitting the third size and I think there might be something off about my gauge. I gauge swatched and checked it and I was fine. I just, maybe I've been stressed out while working on this. I don't know what's happening, but the sleeve is really fitted and I'm having some issues where the underarm just stays stuck right here and I can't move it down or over here because then it just, it feels weird. But I'm using Drops Air and this yarn does wonders after you block it. So I'm not going to judge it until it's blocked. I have the other sleeve to do in four days. So I've been working on this every other day. So this will be my project for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, this sleeve didn't take me very long, so I'm sure I'll be fine. And I did the collar yesterday. I wasn't really in a knitting mood yesterday, but the collar is done and folded over. And all I have to do is just do the sleeve, weave in the ends and block it. And I do have to post it before the 24th, like that it's finished. So hopefully I can just knock out the sleeve. Maybe I'll bring this to work and then also work on it when I get home and just knock it out so that way it'll block super fast or dry really fast so that way I can just take pictures of it. So yeah, but this, I haven't really been looking forward to working on this just because like I'm scared that it won't fit me well, but it's a nice fitted sweater. It's not supposed to be, um, but I also didn't measure myself correctly when I started the test night either, so. I'm hoping blocking will help it. My next project kinda is bumming me out. <laughs> it's my camisole number eight by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I made a mistake. So we know the front is done, but I messed up on the back. So I started the armhole increases too early. There's supposed to be um, three repeats of the cables before I start. So here's where I had it joined, like the two straps joined together. After this repeat, there's supposed to be three more just plain rows of the cables. And then I had to do the increases. I did the repeat and then I started the armhole increases and then I was like, okay, well maybe I can just make up for those plain rows here, but it won't make sense when it's all like coming together at the underarm. So what I'm going to do is rip it back to after this cable was done and then work my three cable repeats and then do my armhole increases. I'm not one to frog things, but I'm going to with this because I I just want my garments to fit me and I just, yeah. So I put this in timeout on the day that I had to work on it because I realized I'd have to rip it out. So, but yeah. I probably won't show this again until I kind of get to this area again or until I like I've joined it in the round, but <sighs> it's fine. But I really love how the cables look and I'm so excited to finish this. But no, this isn't going away. It just needs to be fixed, so. <laughs> My next project is one that I'm working on today, actually. Okay, so next I have my Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. Um, yeah. 
I have it joined in the round. I haven't split for sleeves yet, so it just looks like a blob, but um, I have a few more raglan increases to do before I can split for sleeves, but I thought I would just share that it's joined in the round. <laughs> the yarn I'm using is Drops Kid Silk in the color Soft Mint. Um, yeah. This is, I think I've, I don't want to jinx it, but I think I've overcome my mohair allergy because I was working on this all day a couple days ago and I didn't have a reaction to it. So maybe I was just like overreacting. I don't know. When I was working on it one time. I don't know, but good mindless project. I think I want to make a whole bunch of these, but I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of just breezing through things, but my boyfriend left for an hour because I told him to, because I wanted to sit down and film this because I have so many things to share. So, and like, I, I don't know why I'm showing you projects that haven't really gotten so much done on them, but, um, yeah, like I'm not going to show you my halibut sweater because I got four rows done on it. So I'm just going to put it to the side. But we're getting into new cast-ons now, so this should be exciting. I'm test knitting the Blue Water Sweater by Tressa Widener, and I've cast that on. I need to switch this to a bigger needle, but I have the neckline and the short rows done, and I'm starting some of the texture. The yarn I'm using is I Love This Wool in the color Umber. Um, this is a good yarn that's actually at Hobby Lobby. They only have four shades of it. There's a white, a lighter beige, this one, and then a dark brown. Um, this yarn does pill a lot, though, because it's really soft. Um, but it, it's still really good for Hobby Lobby. But, yeah. Um, I don't really have much to say just because, I mean, I just started it. Um, but yeah, I really like the way this test knit is run. There's a spreadsheet and you can kind of just like mark your progress as you go, which I really like. So yeah, that's my other test knit. Okay. So my last summer knit of this year is going to be, or is the Faye Summer Top by Irene Lynn. Jenny from Honeybird Studio and Searsha from the Cozy Soul Knits were all knitting this together. And th this is so addicting to knit. I haven't knit on it again, knit on it since I first started it. But this is what I got done um, when I did cast this on. This is how much I got done in the afternoon. Um, it's so much fun. I thought it was going to be hard, but it's not. The lace is super simple and the cable, I mean, there's just one. So, I mean, two, but still. The lace is super easy and I love the little bobbles. I haven't done bobbles in so long. Um, but yeah. And I also really like this color. I think it's going to look good on me. Um, but yeah, this is just the back. And then when I'm done with the back, I will pick up for the front and then join it in the round and stuff. So yeah, um, I really like this pattern. I really like the ruffles on the sleeves. This is just going to be so beautiful. One thing I really like about Irene Lynn's patterns is that all of the like texture, it's all written out for you. In this pattern, there's also some charts, but it's all written out for you if you don't like reading charts, which I don't. Um, and she's really good at writing out like clear instructions. Like they're short and sweet, but like it's simple. Um, and I'm happy that she does that with a lot of her patterns. I have the Carly cardigan and the Ran vest and the Afro sweater and yeah, in the Una sweater. And all of those instructions 
or those patterns, even though they are textured and they seem like a lot, everything is written out for you and it's really easy to follow, like row by row. I, it works for me. It doesn't work for a lot of people, but I really appreciate the amount of work that goes into that. But yep, this is my face summer top. I'm using Yarn Bee Bamboodiful, which is a 50-50 cotton bamboo in the color Cerulean Sea. I might have to pick up another one of these, but yeah. It's still been super hot here, even though it's almost September. But um, yeah, hopefully this will be finished so that I can at least wear it maybe one time before it gets too cold. Which I mean, I'll probably still wear this in the winter because heating exists, but it still would be nice to wear in the summer. My last project that I have to share with you is my stages sweater <laughs> um, by Tressa Widener, um, which was made for Pearl Soho. And the yarn I'm using is from Pearl Soho. And this is gonna be kind of hard to show, but oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is how far I got in one day. Um, I'm almost at like the band right here where you use three colors, which I'm super excited for. Um, where is the back? Okay. Um, the pattern doesn't call for a folded neckline. I just wanted to do it because I don't like thin ribbing at the neck. Um, it's a little bit twisted, but it's fine. Uh, I'm not that worried about it. But the color work has been so much fun. And I can't wait to get more progress done on this. So the yarn is Pearl Soho Widgeon, which is 100% fine Falkland Merino. This is Gray Mist. This is Blue Abyss. And this is Orange Carmine. It looks red, kind of, on the screen, but this is like highlighter orange, which I wasn't expecting. But the gray, because this is gray, it really tones it down. And like with the blue and um, this yellow curry color that I'm going to add is really going to make it look more red. Um, but yeah, in real life, this is like safety orange. So, um, but I really like it and I'm excited to see how all the colors will look together. So, yes, that is my stages pullover that I finally cast on. So I do have some future plans to show you. There's only three. And then I also have some pattern acquisitions to talk about. So next up in my knitting queue is going to be a Sophie shawl. I've tried to knit one before and I just lost steam on it. But I have this Patton's Classic Bull Worsted in the color Bright Red left over from my Lume pullover by Sari Nordland. And this isn't necessarily enough to make a Sophie shawl. What I'm going to do is like follow the pattern and use these two for the increases and then use these two for the decreases. So that way I'm kind of using the same amount of yarn. And I just want a bright red scarf. So that's what this is going to be. I have a lot of just patterns classic wool worsted that was used for sweaters and I just had so much left over. Um, so I'm happy that I'm finally using this. I knit my Lume pullover in October of last year and it took me a month to make it. So this has kind of just been sitting around for a little bit. Um, so I'm happy to use this again. And my next cast on is actually going to be a blanket. Um, I really like this kind of yarn for making blankets because it's really warm and super cozy. And this is Yarn Bee Cozy Occasion. It's just acrylic. Well, 100% polyester. But this is the color Ivory and this is Hummus. I have, I think, 10 of these 
and three of these. I'll just kind of do like a stripey situation. Um, so yeah, this yarn calls for an eight millimeter needle and I have eight millimeter needles. So I'll just do like a band of garter stitch and like do the garter stitch at the side and the rest will be stockinette. And I'll just make a giant super cozy blanket. And hopefully I finish it this time because I've tried to knit so many blankets and they've just failed, but I think this chunky yarn will help will help it be done faster or make it be done faster. I don't know. And my last plan, I only have two nice looking skeins of this yarn. It's the um, Loops and Threads Lux Merino, which is, um, this is the color Stormy. And it's 55% superwash merino, 45% acrylic. I used this for my dad's sweater and I really liked it. But I have four of these to make the chestnut sweater by Petite Knit. I want a turtleneck in this dark gray color. I think it'll look really nice. So yeah, this will be my next garment plan. But I'm scared that I'm running out of like garment yarn or garment quantities of yarn because I was having a hard time figuring out like what to knit next because I have a lot of yarn that isn't enough to make a garment but more of like a shawl or a hat and stuff and I'm super scared of gifting wool to family members and friends and stuff um and like I don't need a whole collection of hats and mittens but it, I mean, it'd be nice. I don't know. I could just knit a whole bunch of hats and donate them. I think that would be really cool. But I've, I think I'm running out of like sweater, sweater quantities of yarn, but I also have so much yarn in my knitting queue. That's probably gonna take me a while to go through. So like, I'm good on yarn. Like I still have over 300 skeins of yarn in my stash. So like, I'll be fine. But I was having a hard time coming up with what I should add next to my queue that I just decided to go for an accessory and knit a blanket because I have this yarn to make a blanket and then I also have this 10 balls of the same yarn in like a dark olive color that I want to make a blanket out of. So I thought I would also start to use this up too. But this is relatively new yarn. Um, I got it when I moved here. Like I said, this was from September or October of last year. And then I also bought this yarn with this too. So this has probably been around since maybe November, probably. Cause I know I bought this when I was, when I visited uh, my boyfriend when he was living in South Dakota. So yeah. Okay. I have some pattern acquisitions to talk about. I know I said that I didn't think I was going to be able to get any, but I did say in my vlog that there may or may not be another Irene Lynn knit along happening. And I believe that there is. Uh, Jenny and I are still working on it. I mean, I haven't really texted her about it, but I'll probably talk to her today and see, um, if we can like throw something together. Um, but I'm planning on making the Carly cardigan, but then I also realized that I have the Fina sweater, which I would like to buy yarn for because it does recommend a blown yarn. So I was thinking of using drops air in like a sagey green color. So it might either be the Fina sweater but I did buy the Carly cardigan because I do have some yarn in my stash that I would like to use it for. I have some Lion Brand Woolies in like a salmon-y coral color that I could use for this. So I did get the Carly cardigan. And then I also got the Cumulus T O neck because I do have some um, t-shirt quantities of fingering weight yarn that I would like to use. Um, and I just like the circular neckline, so I got the Cumulus T.O. neck to make that. And the last thing that I bought 
I love all of Zanette Knits. I love her patterns so much. They're so detailed. Her color work is amazing. So I got the Smogus cardigan, which is um, a cardigan with like color work stripes on it. And I was thinking of doing it in like a white main color and black as the contrast. Because that's what I thought the cardigan was originally, but it's white. And then it's like a brownish color for the color work. But I can't get the white and black out of my head. So I think I might use white and black. And yeah, I just really like how that cardigan looks. So I bought it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm sorry if that was a little rushed. I don't have too much I didn't have too much time to film and I just had so much to talk about so I'm sorry if it felt a little bit quick um but yeah I'm so close to finishing a lot of my projects and I have so many things in my knitting plans that I want to knit um, my next cast ons are going to be the Vavika cardigan and cardigan number seven by my favorite things knitwear I've been knitting a lot of cardigans lately. Um, but the Vivica cardigan is all over Fisherman's Rib. So I'm really excited to try something new. Because I haven't done Fisherman's Rib before. But yeah. My next video will be a vlog. So I might have to start that in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you are working on. Um, I think that'd be so interesting to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will see you next week in my vlog. Thank you so much for watching.